little of this. Little of this. Just kidding. Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vayner Chuck, and this is Showdown Throwdown Syrah style on the Thunder Show. I love the head to heads, and I've got to tell you, this is going to be one of the better val ba values. Battles. Um, 30 Bone Syrah, Washington State, California, and uh, two very good producers, very solid, you know, history of knowledge and winemaking and just, you know, a very substantial battle. And I'm excited to see who's gonna count up, come out on top. Blabbering a little bit today. My punch drunk? Maybe. Okay, so we're going to start and talk about a little bit about Borosa, which is, you know, this is the Rhapsody 3 Syrah. This is a 900 case production Syrah. Uh, rolls in at 30 US dollars. Um, these guys have been making really good wine for a little while. And then there's Greg Harrington, who's a master sommelier, uh, who went out to Washington and now makes Gramercy Cellar Syrah. Uh, this is the Langape uh, Vineyard Syrah. This is 30 US dollars. This is 89 plus Stephen Tanzer. Um, so 230 bone Syrahs, you know, a good price point for Syrah. It's okay, I mean, it's definitely on the high side. Um, but I'm darn excited to see how these two go and battle it out. So let's start with the Rhapsody 3 first. Um, we're gonna pour ourselves a little bit here. We're gonna really delve into these head-to-heads. You know, Syrah is really making a name for itself really all over the world now. I mean, when I think about Syrah, I think about great Syrah from California and Washington State, obviously from Australia, clearly from the Rhone Valley in France, Languedoc, Provence, uh, Argentina. I'm starting to see some really high-level Syrah wines. Uh, South Africa. I mean, you're talking about a grape that has been able to find its home in a lot of places. So it's a very versatile grape that really allows itself to do well in a lot of different climates and a lot of different terroirs. And you know, for that, it needs to be respected. Let's give this wine a snippy sniff. It has a little bit of a chocolate kind of thing going on. Really nice raspberry flavors. Black raspberries, that was we found out in episode 148. It's a lot of fun. A little black pepper going on here. Very pretty nose, very smooth, really intense on the chocolate. So for all you chocolate dessert fans out there, I think you're gonna like that. Let's give it a whirl. Big ass glass. You know, when it's a battle of this nature. This is a pay-per-view, just so you know. You can send a check to Eric. Mm. I get a really obvious level of plum on the mid pat. Wow, really obvious plum. Um, um, almost like cocoa dusted covered plums. You know, like a plum with like the cocoa powder wrapped around it. That's what this kind of tastes like. It's got a little bit of greeniness, a little earthiness on the mid palate. A lot more old world than I expected this. So that kind of got me excited. Clearly jammy, big and rich, good start. We'll go back and forth in this battle a little bit. Big and rich like the band. What's that? Big and rich like the band. Big and rich like the band. Yeah, they are, they're massive. Yeah, massive. Gramercy, let's see what's going on here. This is a little more poopy poop, um, right off on the nose, which I like. Uh, a little fertilizer. Um, Little gaminess. This is a little bit of like snap, snap into a Slim Jim too. If you know what I mean? Like Slim Jims are funny. Beef jerky is, I guess, where I'm going with this. This is a little bit more pa passion behind it. Polish. Laser-like focus in the mid palate, which is very intense. Inky black. Rich, um, stylistically reminds me of a lot of Roan, Northern Roan styles. Dark, you know, you know, wearing black, like you know, just who's that country singer? Help me here, Johnny Cash. 
I beat you to it. Anyway, you know, very dark, Johnny Cash in a dark bar drinking whiskey. I mean, that's what this wine makes me think of. It's very dark and blackberries and blueberries and dark chocolate, unlike the milk chocolate cocoa thing going on here. This one with a more dark chocolate, you know, it's gonna have a higher cocoa count. It's gonna have a higher tannin level. Tea-like in its mid palate. Black tea, I mean, again, all these things pointing towards darkness, the Undertaker, uh, you know, kind of like the glove that, uh, you know, Iron Mike Sharp wore in wrestling, the guy that lost every match, remember him? On the initial attack, this wine also has a green pepper kind of thing going on. Now, back to this wine. We're gonna, they're going back and forth, I mean, you know, most fights, you know, are back and forth, it's not just, you know, I've been thinking about the head-to-heads, you know, it's like, I don't want to go one and until, let's go back and forth, let's really delve, let's see what the palate thinks, let's see what the Rhapsody 3 does now. This counters with heavy strawberries, again, very much a fruitier Syrah compared to the darker I don't want to call it earthy because if we had a third party, a three-way match, triple death match or whatever they call them nowadays, um, and it was from the Rhone, it would be even more earthy and more terroir driven, whatever that means. So uh, I'm going to tell you that this is definitely the one that has a little bit more fruit going on, a little more polish um, from the fruit. The polish here is more from the texture. This is the, not polish, I guess I'm looking for the extraction of the fruit is much more uh, obvious in Rhapsody. A little hollow in the mid palate when you compare it to the Gramercy. I think it's a fun format to really go back and forth. You should have two glasses. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. We'll do that next time. God, the big ass glass is so fun. You can just do all sorts of things. Just do it. You know, I've been talking a lot about Walla Walla and uh, and Washington State, but Columbia Valley, where this fruit comes from, is also a great place to produce wine from. You know, it's funny. Both wines are different. Both wines are very well made, and I think that's very important to understand. Neither really excites me on a very major level. Um, this is like, you know, a lot of the pay-per-view fights you've ordered that didn't come through. That's why we've all moved to UFC. But not me. I'm a sweet science guy. Anyway, take your 60 bucks and put it back in your pocket and save your cash. I'm gonna score the Rhapsody 3 an 86. I'm gonna score the Gramercy an 88. Neither, in my opinion, is a buy at the price point. Um, both are lacking oomph, charisma, electricity. There's no electricity in the air, Gorilla Monsoon, in this, in this battle. Um, both are just very textbook standard. This is a little bit more new world. This is a little bit more focused. I respect the fact the wines are very well made. I guess I just have a problem knowing in deep back in the back of my mind that I can get this from the south of France with a crappy euro dollar comparison for seventeen and eighteen dollars. And that's bothering me. At the end of the day, I gotta talk about that stuff. So, um, that's the head to head of Syrahs at Thirty Bones. Maybe not the outcome you wanted, but it's the outcome none. The less. Question of the day. What is the most disappointing $30 wine you've ever had? Because you, with a little bit of me, and the Smurfs, are changing the wine world.